Welcome to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in New York City, one of several streets around the nation named in honor of the slain American civil rights leader who died in 1968. In the annals of 20th century history, few can match his record in terms of securing civil rights for African Americans through non-violent means. Strangely, until now, there has been no major feature film focused on his life, but that's changed with the arrival of Selma. It is a particular chapter in Dr. King's life that is the focus of this film, the Selma Marches in 1965, when he led a movement aimed at effectively enabling African Americans to vote amid violent opposition. It culminated in the 1965 Voting Rights Act backed by President Johnson. For King, it was the most urgent of causes. We need your help, Dr. King. This thing is just going to have to wait. It cannot wait. You the film engages in a large part because of British actor David O'Yellow's strong portrayal of Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King! He is deified, understandably so. Uh, that's not part of my cultural upbringing. So I was able to just approach him as a man. And I started with who he was behind the speeches, who he was as a father, as a friend, as a man who wasn't always sure. And, uh, you know, those are things I know. We do not only strive here today to both. It's startling to think that in the 50 years since these events happened, there haven't been, there hasn't been a, king, a film with King at the center. Um, I was surprised by it. I think it's, um, you know, it's odd, um, but I was happy to remedy it. But for David Oyelowo and much of the cast, what they've put together is more than just a feature film depicting historic events. With the death of two African-American men in incidents involving the police in the U.S. in recent times, it's seen as very topical. It just feels relevant. It feels like it's part of the zeitgeist. It feels like we made it in reaction to Ferguson and what's now happening in terms of Eric Garner, but we didn't. We wrapped on the 3rd of July and Michael Brown was murdered on the 9th of August. The racism that we witness in the film is very overt and, and very extreme. Was there in any way the, for you a, a way of understanding that because of your own experiences as a black man with racism? Well, my, my way into the, the racism as featured in Selma is that, you know, I was brought up in the UK, but I also lived in Nigeria for seven years. And when you've lived in a country where you're not a minority and there isn't uh, a system in place whereby you are marginalized on the basis of your race, when you then live somewhere where you are, it's a very stark difference. And so, you know, having uh, now moved to America and felt that, felt the very clear barriers that exist for black people. Not, this, not in the same way that it was in the 60s, but it's undeniable. What I do know is he's nonviolent. What I need to know right now, what's Martin Luther King about to do next? The film is making history. Ava DuVernay has secured a Golden Globe Best Direct nomination, a first for a black woman. She could find the same happens with the Oscar nominations. Do you think it's significant that you, uh, as an African-American and a woman, have been able to make this feature film and now people are talking about it as having Oscars potential, significant for the film industry? I'm not sure, you know, uh, uh, the film industry is a fickle thing. I can only focus on, on the film itself and what I hope that it does in the world as it moves along. But, but yes, I mean, there, there are nice things being said. It remains to be seen as to whether or not it changes anything. <laughs> Selma is a nicely shot, well-written, well-acted film. It's more than just an Oscar-bound vehicle. It's seen as a picture that's going to reach audiences at an important time. What happens when a man stands up, says enough is enough? <laughs>